can't go wrong, right? To the moon, right? Diamond hands, shit hands, whatever they're called, right? Usually something's gonna be happening. So that's why I try to avoid uh, the really, really aggressive. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another weekend edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody's doing well. Cheers. Let's talk about the markets, right? Um, we're winding down summer, okay? That's kind of been the theme now for the last week or so, right? Uh, we talked about the importance Monday and Tuesday of what happens when you have a contracting cycle. Everything goes sideways. The ranges are obviously getting tighter and tighter. And it's more of a waiting game for your specific stocks or your specific group that you trade to kind of give you a signal to wake up. And Monday and Tuesday were very, really painfully slow. You know, you had, um, you know, you had some of these tech stocks, you know, moving up maybe a dollar, maybe 70 cents. They were just all trading this really tight channel. And the, the continuing point, the reiteration for Monday and Tuesday session was just wait, right? Just wait. Distribution usually lasts about a week. And if you guys remember, uh, going back to like Wednesday or Thursday of the previous week, we already started seeing these channels uh, start to shrink. So it was just kind of a matter of time. And, and the key point to this was, and especially to newer traders is, you don't need to trade every single day. You don't need to trade every second of the day. Uh, if you don't have uh, you know 38 positions on by 931, I promise you the day is not over. And just relax, right? Just relax. Take a deep breath. There shouldn't be any FOMO. There shouldn't be uh, any, you know, mental thought of this is the last day of trading. I have to put it on every single position at every given time. Every stock is moving. I have to be in everything, Whew, right? Take a deep breath, slow down. It's a long-term game. Uh, the more time passes, the more screen time you get, you're going to start to realize very, very quickly that you don't need to trade every single day. And those days that you see that channels are contracting, you can just relax. You can just relax, uh, gather up data, uh, reinforce your opinion of what's about to happen next, and kind of wait for that, again, like we talked about Monday and Tuesday session, that underhanded pitch to wake up. And the common denominator was for Monday and Tuesday, we didn't see any option flow, zero, okay? Uh, there was no institutional flow in any tech stock names, and we were just kind of drifting, right? just drifting, people are on vacation, we all understood that. And it was just a matter of time, but we just didn't know when that time was gonna come. Was it gonna come on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, next week after Labor Day? When was this finally cycle of the contracting channels gonna to come to an end and start to expand? We got that answer very, very quickly. Uh, come Wednesday, okay, we saw the first sign of out of the money option flow in a lot of names and not they weren't just coming for you know 30 grand bets 60 grand bets 80 grand bets fourteen thousand dollar bets they started coming right they started coming you started seeing uh apple they were coming for uh the 149 150s the 155s for the following week you started seeing uh even when the video was very very quiet you started seeing a uh, really aggressive option flow and again we'll get to all the individual pivots uh in, in a second but you started seeing really good option flow. You started seeing repeat buyers coming in of uh, the 820, 205 calls in NVIDIA ahead of earnings, a lot of aggressive buying. You saw Tesla with a really long consolidation throughout the whole week, uh, very long, actually two weeks, uh, finally starting to see 730, 750 short-term uh, expiration. You started seeing Facebook, right? They were coming you know, for the 380s. They were coming for shorter-term expiration. They were coming from Microsoft, the 290s. So it was just a matter of time that everything was going to wake up. The question was when. And this is the greatest thing uh, about being in control of your trading. Just understand, especially if you're a new trader, and, I, and I've, been, I've been saying this for years, you don't trade because the market's open. You trade because you're getting value, because you have your edge, because you have the stocks that you've been trading for years and years and years, or, or in some cases for your new traders, months and months and months, they finally wake up, they finally have a pulse. And when the options market gets started again, again, you don't have to be an options trader to understand this, but when the options market starts fueling up again, they start coming in with pretty decent size uh, and they're going 
out of the money, really aggressively out of the money with short-term expiration, usually the underlying security is going to wake up eventually. And that's exactly what we saw Wednesday, a uh, super aggressive uh, day on Wednesday. If you guys uh, all know, especially if all you guys have been watching this broadcast, there is no there is no video Thursday nights. I usually relax Thursday nights, uh, kind of get my, get my center, recharge my batteries so I can be fresh in the morning. We'll, we'll show you all the continuation pivots in a second from Thursday. It was a very aggressive day, but Friday set up uh, into be a, a really aggressive day. And we'll talk about it again in a second. Uh, really aggressive. Technology was the key. Uh, they all woke up, not all of them, but the ones that we were watching, uh, they pretty much all woke up and is setting up to be really good prices uh, and good potential going into next week. Now, is everything looking great? Absolutely not, right? Uh, if you look at Amazon, it, again, it still hasn't recovered uh, from its earnings. If you look at Netflix, uh, you know, not really recovered. It had, a, you know, had a little bit of spark on Friday, but it hasn't really recovered. You look at Roku, has just been getting just destroyed, right? Especially uh, since, you know, some, since those recent highs about a month ago, just really, really destroyed. Earnings didn't help. Uh, you got the stay-at-home stocks not participating. Zoom, uh, Peloton look like you know complete you know complete garbage. Uh, you have the Chinese stocks looking you know terrible. Look at Baidu, right? Look at Baidu. Uh, look at a name like Alibaba, although it has certain days of upward. The stock is just not tradable anymore until they kind of figure out what the hell what they want to do with listing and all that stuff. It's just not tradable. But there's a flip side to this. There's, a, you know, there's an aggressive nature on a lot of names that did well on earnings or actually just didn't do horrible. I think that's the best way of saying it. And they're doing very, very well. Tesla attempted to break out on Friday, uh, got rejected. Again, I, I will say this much. Out of all the pivots on Friday, this one had the hardest probability. The, and the reason why I say that, I don't know if you guys remember this. You probably don't. For all you guys who do watch these uh, videos religiously, you kind of you kind of remember. You guys remember I did a video, uh, and if Kyler or, or, or Kenyon was doing the video uh, editing, can kind of find the video. I, I did a I, I did a um, a mention on a company called Wish, and it has nothing to do with the fact it blew up. I, I only found out that it blew up on. Uh, I only found out that it only blew. I don't follow this stuff, so I only found uh, found out that this thing blew up on earnings yesterday. But if you guys remember, I, I did a video somewhere around. It, it was somewhere around June that it felt like everybody on social media was looking at this $15 area, like literally all retail, everybody. And I made a joke back then. I think my mother called me up and said, hey, what do you think about buying Wish at 15? And, and the problem is when everybody's on the right side of the market, usually something bad's going to happen. So kind of fast forward, right? Um, so we were trading Tesla for the whole week. We caught this really aggressive pivot on Thursday session from the 712 pivot. You can see here or right here. You see the 712 pivot that really set the tone for Friday. But all you kept on seeing like Friday morning, Thursday night, over and over again. Watch the 727 on Tesla. Watch the 720. I'm talking about you literally saw everybody tweet that price. Usually when, when I'm trading Tesla, there's a lot of sneaky channels that nobody's really looking at and I could take advantage of, but like you just saw literally everybody. 727, 727, 727. I swear my poodle called me downstairs. She goes, oh, is 727 still the poodle? It's still the pivot. So, it, you know, it took out 727. It went to uh, 728, got, got rejected in seconds. I'm talking about got rejected in seconds, went down to like 720. We actually bought it on the on the on the remount back at 727 for a push into the 730. But this is kind of what my point is on a crowded trade. Uh, when you're in a crowded trade, and again, this, you know, nobody was wrong. 727 was the spot on Tesla. But the problem is, and we've said this for years and years and years, when everybody's on the right on one side of the ledger, like literally, and people are just waking up to never traded Tesla before, just never traded any stock before. And they're all trading it on one side of the market. Something is usually going to bad going to happen. And from what I saw, um, you know, we tried Tesla twice on Friday. I know a lot of you guys came in long, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. Um, I bought it off the opening range. It ran up like two, two and a half dollars in seconds, and then it got stuffed. So I got out of it really quickly, uh, breaking. But we kind of anticipated that happening just because there was so much social media presence on that number. Um, so I wasn't shocked, but when it reclaimed it back at 727, got long again, went to like 730 and change, which it got rejected off the linear regression line. But at least now I have a sneakier channel to kind of watch the stock into next week. But that's kind of the point, folks. And, and again, you don't have to be uh, even trading the stock. But when you see people talking about the same stock at the same price and you see everybody talking about it, usually, you know, they're not wrong. 
but there's usually a high probability that something is going to go wrong along the way of that entry. And, you know, we saw that uh, with Tesla on Friday, and you constantly see that with other names uh, throughout your career. So just be careful. When you see everybody talking about the same stock at the same price at the same time, can't go wrong, right? To the moon, right? Diamond hands, shit hands, whatever they're called, right? Usually something's going to happen. So that's why I try to avoid uh, the really, really aggressive uh, crowded trade. So going into uh, this week, uh, again, look, you have to be bullish. Again, for all the names that I mentioned that look crappy, there's a lot of names that look really, really good. Uh, where it's stone throws away uh, from all time highs. Again, on the queues, we are stone throws away. I have, this thing, this thing's just been melting up. You can see how tight it's been going, and it's been really, really melting, uh, melting up. You guys remember we were talking about the IWM, right? Still hasn't reclaimed that 125 level on the 50 day. And the ironic part about it is, look how strong some of these stocks are. So many names are strong, and the, the Russell's not even participating compared to everything else. So I can just imagine, right, going into the fourth quarter, and I think we talked about this on the Tuesday and Wednesday night video. Well, what do you think is going to happen? What, what do you think? Well, how do you this? What do you think the probability is of a fourth quarter rally if the IWM eventually does reclaim the 50-day moving average and joins everything else uh, with it? Other than that, you have uh, a lot of these asset classes doing really, really well, especially uh, the Bitco uh, Bitcoin uh, crypto names have been going out of their minds. Obviously, uh, the beta names have been very, very strong. Uh, the banks have been on a runaway train. They had a little bit of a pullback on Friday, but they've been on a runaway train. Obviously, that is a play on interest rates eventually uh, going to start to rise. So you got a perfect storm, right? You got banks strong, you have technology strong, and if the Russell, the smaller cap names, kind of reclaim that 25 level, you're going to just see a full onslaught of a fourth quarter uh, bull stampede. So really, really aggressive week uh, this week. Knock on wood, I was so happy after that first two days of the week that was so damn painfully slow that everything eventually woke up and that's exactly what happened. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about Friday's pivots and then we'll talk about uh, some names that I like for this week. Uh, again, you could, you could just see this. So here was the, the pivot. Remember, there's no video on Thursday night. So Thursday, there was a really sneaky pivot on Tesla, 712 for experienced traders only. If it can build, it could finally wake up. Remember, there's a bunch of other areas that needs to clear. Obviously, it cleared out everything. So it kind of led to Friday's big number. Fantastic move yesterday. Took out five days worth of selling. 727 continues to be a big number. It needs to confirm. And that's when kind of everybody was looking at the stock and only went up a few points. Uh, before it got rejected on Thursday night, uh, Apple uh, Thursday session, excuse me, Apple uh, 148 huge level rejected three times on daily needs to build. Uh, you know, it, it's still sitting around that 149 level, so went up about a buck and buck and change. But that 150 level on Apple is going to be really, really big uh, going into this week. You can see it got rejected here several times. So this one definitely, definitely keep an eye on, guys. I know some of you guys. Uh, are still long from Thursday off that 148 level. This looks really, really good. Uh, just a matter of time. Uh, for, uh, for Thursday again, Thursday, you can see how big that, that Thursday session was. Uh, 286 big level, right? This is Thursday session. Uh, 286 big level needs to build. They're coming for the 290 weeklies, even uh, the end of the month, uh, 300 calls. And then obviously for Friday's notes, nice cash flow pop on Wednesday. 289, 289 needs to build for expanded move. Here was snow, right? Here was snow. So it, on, on Thursday, it took out this 86, took out the 89, went to uh, 92. This thing looks higher. This thing looks like it wants to press uh, that 300 level. It's a really good name there. Uh, Etsy, right? We talked about this on Thursday session. 194.50, 195 needs to build. The 50-day supply is around 97. The macro trade starts above 97. And my notes again for Friday that exactly what we discussed now needs that 197 base for macro. And here is uh, Etsy, right? Here is Etsy. You can see here why exactly this 97, right? So it took out the 94 and a half, 95 traded right to supply, right? Which is the 97 area. Guys, for this week, keep an eye on Etsy. If this thing can just get above and close above 97, you got you got a gap fill all the way to 210, maybe even to 220. So keep an eye on Etsy uh, for uh, for this week. Uh, Facebook, again, you can see how beta re reacted really, really well, uh, especially in the last couple of days. Facebook rejected 363 twice, uh, needs to build. Here was Facebook, right? So it took out the 363 level. You can see here on the 60-minute chart, took out this whole 363 level. The only reason why it stopped 
uh, right at supply is because, well, there's supply. It usually happens. So you have a bigger macro level uh, approaching uh, approaching um, Facebook for this week. Uh, put up you know, about a $2 move on Friday, but it's, you have this big macro level that's ahead on Facebook. So if everybody, everything gets strong, social Facebook. Uh, Microsoft 290 needs to build. Again, these guys, one by one, they're waking up, folks. One by one. So here is Microsoft took out this 290, traded to uh, 293. This thing looks like it's gonna test the 300 level in the next couple of weeks. Uh, microchip stopped exactly at 52. A little bit thin of a, thin of a name, I'm, I'm not really feeling this one. Uh, Amazon never got the 33.16. Uh, Penn I still like. Guys, watch Penn for this week. Uh, again, you got football season starting. Uh, you have the MLB uh, down the stretch. You have college football starting. Watch Penn, look, look at this channel here on Penn, right off the bottom, right? If Penn, and again, it's nowhere near it yet, but 7 alert, this thing can get above 75. And again, it's still $4 away, but if Penn can reclaim 75, I think it's going to wake up. So watch that as well. Uh, dog, dog went absolutely nuts. Uh, 130, 150, 132 uh, needs to build. Here was dog, D D O G. So it took out the 3150, 32, and traded all the way up to 37 and a half. I still like it. This thing gets above 38. You should get another move up. So big, again, you can see big, big moves, uh, really, really strong moves. Again, take on the way, uh, 135, 38, next stop, it went to 37 and a half. Uh, Microsoft looking strong, put up a $3, a $3 candle, uh, destroyed that with 291.55, went to 293. Uh, AMD, again, this is the, the power of option flow. This is my point. You don't need to be an options trader to understand that there's a significance of option flow. Uh, a block comes in for 5,000, 5,000 calls traded uh, for next week's 117. Any close over 110 is huge. It needs to reclaim. Here was AMD. Uh, right off that aggressive call buying on, a oops, not AMC, big difference, uh, AMD. So you, here's the 110. It took out the 110, uh, went to nearly 112. Over 112, this thing is gone. Uh, so keep an eye on that. But big, big moves, one after another after another. Uh, Facebook, 365 on deck. Here comes the 310 calls coming in on November. Remember, option flow really does dic dictate underlying security movements. Uh, here comes the 130 for January is on AMD. Uh, sparking it up one by one, 112 on deck. Uh, good stuff. You know, excellent moves, excellent moves. Just a friendly reminder. Again, for all you guys who are planning to join us uh, over the weekend, please watch the workshops. This is not a, a basic uh, a basic strategy you could just find on YouTube. There's a lot of moving parts, all, you know, where, where it, it's so concentrated. You have to be very, very specific in what you're doing. So please, please just watch the workshops before you come in on Monday. Uh, and the video 201 needs to build. Um, again, repeat 205 call buyers coming in one by one by one. I still like this thing. Um, you know, it closed around 202. I think this thing reclaims that 202 area. You could get a push ahead of earnings. Let me give you guys a couple of names I, I like uh, going into uh, this week. Keep an eye on this open. Um, again, not usually a name that I would look at, but it had a really, really big move on earnings. Uh, rested. It might go sideways for a couple of days, but if this thing could just take out these earnings highs, um, you got you know you have a nice channel to fill. What I like about it, it had this monster move on huge expansion volume, and you had a nice rest area here with about a third of the size. Keep an eye on this thing to attack the top of the range here. Uh, look at Envax, right? Envax looks very very strong. If you look at what uh, you know what this Delta variant is doing, all these you know you know all these stocks are really starting to pop. Moderna had this magical. Uh, run BNTX had this magical run. Um, you know, keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts taking out this whole channel here. Uh, NVAX could explode as well. Um, let me see what else I want to talk about. Uh, look at Vic Victoria's Secrets. How you doing? Right, Victoria's Secrets. Uh, looks looks like they they got spun spun off. I think I think they were owned by limited brands. They got spun off again. You know, nice tight channel on Victoria's Secret. That's what I said. Right? If this thing confirms this channel, who knows? Maybe this thing could expand as well. Not everything to the long side, right? You have Zoom, it looks like it wants to break down. You have Peloton, uh, looks like it wants to break down. You got Baidu, looks like an inch away from falling off the end of the earth. So there is value on both sides. Uh, for me, at least the value is on the long side, but again, it's very, very quickly sh to shift gears and all that good stuff comes with it. Guys, have a blessed remainder of your weekend. God bless, enjoy the weather, especially for all of us in the Northeast. We know winter is coming, so let's soak up the sun and enjoy.